All right, let's go. Good afternoon. Does anybody else feel the presence of the Holy Ghost? Would you do me a kind gesture if you're able to physically do so? Would you stand just for one more moment before you sit down? It's taking me a minute to wrap my mind around what God is doing. So you all will have to be patient with your pastor. Because I just said that I'm your pastor. so very grateful that the Lord chose me. So I would normally say forgive my tears, but they come from 806 East Mitchell in Cincinnati, Ohio, where my dad walked out on me and my mom, but my mama still raised me to know Jesus. One day when I was playing on the front lawn, I was four years old, some teenagers from the neighborhood in the middle of the day attempted to snatch my innocence away. My front door was open, my mother was inside, but I didn't scream. And from that moment of abuse where the enemy tried to snatch my innocence and redirect my identity, it was only by the grace of the Lord Jesus that I didn't lose my mind, my purpose, or my destiny. I think about every moment where the enemy tried to cut me off and God still got me here. So I couldn't preach, not this afternoon, without stopping to give God a praise. So y'all excuse me for a moment.
get to this altar. Hallelujah. 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 You're in this room. You're in this room. You're in this room. We give. We give. We give it all to you. We give it all to you. You are my savior. You are my redeemer. You are my savior. You are my redeemer. You are my savior. We give you all. We give you all. regularly scheduled service to bring you a special announcement, announcement. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Spirit is here to meet your every need. Ha! Right there I feel the Holy Ghost. Even if you came just to see what was going on, you're leaving with a miracle. Yes, you are. 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 The Lord is here. The Lord is here.
Jesus can hear you. So From the breakthrough you've been praying for. Some of you are one shout away. The transaction that you're waiting on is not natural, it is supernatural, and the supernatural is unlocked with a sound. Don't look at me, don't try to figure it out. We're in a miracle moment. If I were you, I wouldn't be worried about what the person next to me is going to think about me. I'm not here for them. I need God to move in my life right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. I didn't come out here in the rain to leave the same way that I came. I'm going to give you 30 seconds so you can come, Jesus. Oh, hey, and have your no. way. Hey. Do it, God. Give God a welcome in this place, praise. Crazy, radical, unashamed, spin around, 
get in the aisle. I want you to offend the rug. I want you to stop, move. Oh, have your way. Somebody throw those hands up if you're ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to see something I've never seen. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. ready. I'm ready to uh -huh. see something I've never seen. Something I've never seen. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. Say it again. It's a new thing. It's a new thing. Tell them about it. It's a new thing. Tell them about Something it. I've never seen. Something I've never seen. Eyes haven't seen it. Eyes haven't seen it. Ears haven't heard it. <laughs> what the Lord's getting ready to do in my life. Tell them about it. I wish somebody uh -huh. who believed that God is in this room throw your hands up and say, God, I'm ready. 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 God. Oh, I'm ready. offend our visitors. I don't want anybody to think we're crazy. Stop. People online will think we've lost our mind. Stop. We should just have regular church. Stop. All of this praising will mess around and change your life. Stop. You better stay in your seat. Why are you jumping? Don't you start. I need somebody to act like you got some sense. Or maybe not. You're 
mystery. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I got it! My healing! Yeah. 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 Tell somebody I got it! Lord, you're here. Past our exuberant expression in worship. Meet us in your word so that there is substance to go with our celebration. We love you. We praise you. And we're not sneaking out early to get to Golden Corral. We're going to stay and get this word. Because you're up to something in Greenville. Ah, yeah. You're up to something in Greenville. Simpsonville. Career. What's the other areas that I don't know yet? I said that one. Anderson. Clemson, Clemson, Spartanburg, Spartanburg. Yeah, that's all I got. The entire upstate, yeah, yeah. Charlotte, yes, sir. Atlanta. Atlanta, surrounding regions. Yes, sir. If God's been good to you, red and yellow, black and white, you are precious in His sight. Give Him praise today, tonight, anytime you can. It's all right. It's all right. All right. All right. Somebody give him a praise right there. Right there, right there. Right there, right there. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3. That's your first lady, Pastor Aventer, down here shouting. I'm trying to act right. When she starts shouting, I start shouting because I remember where we were seven years ago. On our wedding day, I had negative $11 in the bank. She rolled with me like I had something that was more valuable than money. I had a vision. And she's rolled with me. 
Ladies, stick with a man. If he's got a vision and he's got some worship, God will get you where you're supposed to be. Man of God, keep going. It's not easy. But I'm living witness. They can laugh at you, talk about you, try to hide you, keep you under wraps, overlooked, undervalued, hidden, marginalized. But I am a living witness that God will take you from, what's your name again? To we've been waiting on you in one moment. I am a living witness. I represent those that they weren't even looking for, but they need us when we show up. Matthew chapter 3, starting at the 13th verse, 13th verse, reading from the New King James Version. I would normally apologize to our visitors, but I'm not, because I wouldn't mean it if I said it. God has been good to us. God has been good to me. And I wasn't going to stand up here like I earned this. I'm going to give him praise because this is a miracle. There comes a point and a moment in your life when God will hold a press conference on your behalf. It's better than any marketing firm, Stephen. It's better than, it's better than Facebook. It's better than your best Instagram post. You don't need a thumbs up for this. You don't need anybody to like or comment. Yeah. You don't need to worry about the trolls with four followers and a private page who say all kinds of ugly things under your picture. No, there comes a moment in each life when it is submitted to God that God says, the Kairos, Chronos, the, 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 the eternal and the temporal, the, the process of time and the spiritual declaration over your life collide. There is a moment when heaven and earth collide. There is a moment when time and eternity converge. And it is in that moment where you have walked through the requisite necessities of your purpose, you come to a doorway, and at that moment that you're at the threshold of the thing God has created you for, he steps off of his throne to the edge of heaven, cuts a hole in eternity, and shouts into time, that one belongs to me. I feel the Holy Ghost shaking that's about to happen. Please tell your neighbor now, say, excuse me for the worship I'm about to let loose. Just tell him, excuse me. Just tell him. And I mean worship. Don't let loose nothing else. Just let loose some worship. Hold your gas. Let loose your worship. Don't be shouting and blame that little extra on the, <laughs> that wasn't the Holy Ghost. That was the devil. You don't know it, but angels and demons been fighting over you since you were in your mother's womb. Does anybody know that there's been a warfare? The devil has tried every single thing that he could. He whispered in your mother's ear, some of you, that she should have never had you. Some of you were told that you weren't planned. We don't know how you showed up. Well, I know. It started with some Marvin Gaye. Y'all was in there slow dancing. And never mind. I don't know what you've heard about yourself, but you are not an accident. You are not the product of family planning. You can't sneak into the earth. You have to be spoken into the earth. And inasmuch as God has spoken your name, you are exactly where you are supposed to be. But God has always often hidden his best gifts in nondescript locations. Nazareth, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Yeah, the savior of the world can come out of Nazareth. 
God will often hide supernatural global provision in nondescript locations. Greenville. What do you mean the fastest growing church in America is in Greenville? Somebody missed it, so I'm going to just rewind and prophesy into the wind. Greenville. What do you mean the fastest growing, multicultural, multi-generational, God-honoring church that partners with every other church in the region because we're not in competition. It's all one body in Christ. We celebrate every pastor and every leader that's been serving the kingdom in this region. What do you mean people are moving to Greenville to be a part of a church? What do you mean people drive two hours to go to church? No, they're not driving two hours to go to church. They're driving two hours because God is here. Does anybody know God is here? Am I the only one that believes God is in this place? What if a supernatural revival moment that we haven't seen since the days of the Bible broke out right here, down the street from Haywood Mall, by the Waffle House, which is the Holy Ghost. Down the street from Steak and Shake. And Chuck E. Cheese, my God. You are here because God has decided it's time for you to be announced to the world. It's quiet in this church because you didn't know that you were going to be announced today. You woke up this morning, it was raining, and said, I guess I'll go to church. And the enemy was hoping you'd stay home. But if you've ever sown any seed in your life, you should get excited about rain. I wish somebody would act up right there. When you see rain, you should be like, promise, you promised, seed time, harvest. What if today was harvest? What if this Sunday was the day? What if today? Tell somebody, today is my day of announcement. God is doing weird things, Jeff, in the lives of believers, people who have been sowing in private, serving without recognition, and worshiping without need of celebration. God is doing something significant, strange, that God is shining a light on the local church, strange, that God is doing something so significant in Greenville that God wants the world to see it. I say this not to boast, but to let you know that when God puts his hands on something, he means for the world to know about it. Tomorrow morning, your first lady and pastor, Aventa Gray, will be on the Today Show. Yeah, and they're going to be asking her, and I'm going to be sitting next to her, and they're going to ask her, so the Lord is, you guys are moving to Greenville? You're leaving Houston? What would make you do that? And she's going to say a name that's not very popular on network TV. <laughs> Pastor Robert, she's going to say, the Holy Ghost told me and my husband to move to Greenville because Jesus was going to do miracles in Greenville. If y'all like to stop by, we're open Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and first Wednesday is your night night. Stop by and get some of this upstate hospitality. But in the meantime, the Holy Ghost is announcing us. I 
I said, God's about to announce you on a national and global scale. Matthew chapter 3, I got to hurry, it's already time to go, and I ain't even gave you no scripture. My mouth all ashy, I done shouted all the water out of my body. And I'm doing that book signing after church, so everybody get one. It's called I'm Number 8. I'm going to bless somebody with this. Who wants this one? I saw your hand first. You want this book? It's out in the lobby. I'll be there after church, and you can... Give her this book. Love you. Come see your pastor after church. I'm going to be out there. Come hug us. We, I ain't even met all y'all. Come say hi. Don't leave without hugging me and my wife. And bring some uh, waffles from Waffle House. Too. <laughs> Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized. How many people have been baptized in here? You know that baptism is a mark. It's an outward symbol of an inward change. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's going to trouble the water. Whoa, wait in the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water. God's going to trouble the water. I know we sing all these new songs, but every now and then I need somebody to sing me a hymn. Jesus came to the Jordan River. The Jordan is symbolic of death. Something has to die in order for the new thing to live. This is a season where God, out of his love for you, has caused you to confront the things in you that need to die in order for the thing he wants you to occupy can live. Some of you have been heartbroken because some of it was relational. It was like, but God, I need him and I love him. And, and, oh my God, my eggs. And I'm not getting any younger, Jesus. And please. But he really wasn't everything on your prayer list. You basically had to raise him. And if you got to raise him, that ain't your husband. That's your son. Somebody say Jordan. Jordan. Every life, nephew, will have a Jordan moment where you either stay who you were or you step into who you're called to be. I believe this afternoon is a Jordan moment where in the next 10 to 15 minutes you will cross over from where you were before you walked into this church or those who are watching online to who you're called to be. Jesus walked up on the John the Baptist, his cousin, by six months. John said, I shouldn't be baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. And in the 15th verse, Jesus said, permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then John allowed him. And when Jesus had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. I don't know who this is for, but once you get saved, come up immediately. Don't stay in that thing. Come up immediately. Don't wallow in that thing. Come up immediately. I don't care what you used to do. Come up immediately. I don't care who you used to hang out with. Come up immediately. I don't care if they try to remind you every day of what you used to do and who you used to be. You come up immediately. Whatever you were is not what you are. And if it's in there, it's going to stay there because in Christ you are a new creation 
I'm going to say it, Lord, because you put it in my heart. God says there are people here who because of things and bad choices you made in your past, you're carrying the shame and the guilt, and some of you are carrying issues or diseases from a former version of your life. But God says by the power of the Holy Ghost, some people in here are going to be healed in this service of something that you got from your former life. God is getting ready to heal you, and that thing is not going to be in your bloodstream the next time you go to the doctor. I don't know who that is for, but everybody needs to shout. Everybody needs to shout. So whoever it applies to can shout without judgment. Everybody shout for five seconds. Four, three, two. Hey! And then, when he had been baptized, he came up, and behold, the heavens were open to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly, I'm not going to rush this word, and suddenly, ladies and gentlemen, you've stepped into a season of suddenly. I know you've been redemption, but suddenly, you turned into relentless. I know what you were, but it's now time to step into what you are. And we thank God for 27 years of a godly legacy. But there's a suddenly that has come into the building. And if you can shift with the suddenly, you'll see the supernatural. And suddenly, a voice from heaven came saying, come here, Mel. Come here, Mel. Come here, Mel. Just to let you know that God sees your seed and multiplies it back into your hand. Just like that. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men pour into your bosom. Which means it ain't going to be angels flying down. God's going to speak to somebody and they're going to sow into your vision, sow into your dream, sow into your business. They're just going to walk up to you on your job. I don't even know why. I just got to give you this. I need a 10-second praise break right there. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. And suddenly, a voice from heaven came saying, This is my beloved son, 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 in whom I'm well pleased, please, please. Jesus, the prophesied Messiah, Jesus, the propitiation, the full payment for our sins, Jesus, the fulfillment, Jesus. The Old and New Testament, behold, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Jesus, 66 books, 1,500 years of history, over 40 different writers, all pointing to one man, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, baptized in the Jordan, raised up, and the Holy Ghost descended upon him, and the Father stepped off the throne, shouted into time and said, that's my son. The announcement. The title of this eight-minute sermon, because all of that was the introduction. It's the announcement. God has decided to announce you. I know it because He's positioned me as your pastor, and he has decided to announce me. And whatever is on me comes to you. And I can tell you that I'm in a season that I never thought I'd be in. I prayed about it, but I'm in it right now. I'm going to tell you all something that's going to sound crazy, but I said to the Lord, I want you to bless me and my wife so much that I look in my account and say, I have too much. And I need to give it away. Now let me make it clear to you. We are thousandaires. <laughs> Lo, I am with you always. 
but it's more than what we had when we started. We told God that if you ever gave us anything, we'd give it away. When we had tens, we gave away tens. When we had hundreds, we gave away hundreds. Now that we got thousands, we give away thousands. You know why? Because we sow, because we love God. If he gives us something back, that's fine. But we've been tithing. We're not going to stop now. But now in the last couple of months, God's been doing stuff so crazy that I've just been walking around just sowing. By the, by the way, just so you know, when you have seed in your pocket, listen to the voice of the Holy Ghost because he will tell you, don't drive past that person with that sign. You know, when they be right by your car, you be looking straight ahead. Like, they be right here in your window. Be, I don't see nothing. Be careful because sometimes we entertain angels unaware. And God wants to see how you treat people you don't think you need. We have sown for so long. We hit harvest and I didn't even realize it. Help me, Jesus. And God is announcing that there's about to be Oh, Lord, let them catch it. There's about to be an unprecedented flow of resources that are getting ready to come through these doors. If you ever thought about opening a business, you got to do it in 2018. If you ever thought about running after a house and, and not renting, you got to do it in 2018. If you ever thought about going back to school or getting that next degree, you need to do that right now. God's about to release some of you from debt and he's going to release you from student loans. Some of you are getting ready to get free from tax issues. God is about to supernaturally give you a clean slate. Do you know that God is able to do it? Is there anybody that believes that God is able to do it? God is going to announce you to mortgage lenders. He's going to announce you to supervisors. He's going to announce you to recruitment specialists. He's going to announce you to business developers. He's going to announce you to creative people. He's going to announce your book, your movie, your song, your play. He's going to announce your family recipe. God is about to announce you. Do you know you've stepped into a moment that anonymity is over, the announcement is at hand. Well, stay right there, Pastor MJ. I'm gonna stay right there. Here's the thing about the announcement. There's three eyes that try to attack you in your moment of announcement. Insecurities, inadequacies, and insufficiencies. But I need you to get this in your spirit. My insecurities don't change the announcement. God didn't call me because I was great. He called me because he wasn't going to leave me. And his strength is made perfect in my weakness. So the weaker you are, the stronger you are. Because whatever you can't do, God's going to have to do. Is there anybody that says, God, do it. God, do it. God, My insecurities don't change the announcement. My inadequacies don't change the announcement. And my insufficiencies don't change the announcement. I don't know who this is for, but stop beating yourself up for what you don't have, for what you did wrong, and for the way you see yourself sitting in the mirror for two hours trying to fix what was never broken. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. Speak to every woman of God in here. I bind that devil that tells you in the mirror that you're not beautiful. You sitting in there, oh, I'm too fat. I'm too thin. My hair is too short. It's too long. I got a pimple. I got stretch marks. Whatever. You done had three kids. What you talking about? You may have a couple stretch marks, but you also have a legacy. And if that man don't love you, God will send somebody that will love you, your pimple, and your stretch marks. If somebody can't see you, it's not your fault. It's their loss.
The moment that God announced Jesus, he was immediately elevated to a place of prominence in the community that he could not and would not have had had heaven not spoken. I want you to know that elevation comes with the announcement. I'm going to say it again. Elevation comes with the announcement. There are people that already didn't like you. They're really going to dislike you now. But here's the thing, elder. They don't, it's not that they don't like you because of something you did. It's because they can't control you. And they can't contain you. And so people that they can't control and can't contain, they don't like. And so they start text messaging other people so they cannot like you too. And all of that's about to be exposed. And God's going to elevate you while they texting. Elevate you while they're talking. He's going to announce you while they're hating. While they're hating, they're going to turn the TV on and see your face. I wish I had six people that would just high five, shout, clap. While you're hating, they're going to see your face. Watch this. Some of the people are going to try to bring up your past. But as far as the east is from the west, he casts your sins and remembers them no more. So while you bringing up my past, God has already seeded my future. I need somebody in here that knows God is more concerned with what you're going to be than what you used to be. want you to know that you're not just announced, you're anointed. In the Old Testament, the anointing means you were smeared. Like God took his physical finger and just put it on your forehead and said, that one belongs to me. Some of y'all in here, you try to do wrong. You can't even do wrong right. Am I talking to you? You can't even sin right. You get convicted. You be trying to do wrong. The Bible open all on the all on the nightstand. You can't even get your slow jam on because Jesus is looking at you. I see you. (laughs) I'm confused. I was about to drink the microphone and speak into the water. Tell somebody I'm anointed. But here's the thing about the anointing. You can be anointed, but not yet announced. A lot of people get frustrated, Jacob, with the distance between their anointing and their announcement. Because Jesus was anointed in Mary's womb. But it wasn't 30. He was 30 when he got announced. So there is a distance between your anointing and your announcement. See, I was anointed when I was little. My mama asked God when I was a little boy, show me who I'm raising. And God says, you're raising a leader. And when I was five years old, she caught me watching Walter Cronkite and the world news instead of cartoons. And she said, this is strange that a five-year-old would rather watch the news than cartoons. And that's the day that God said, you're raising a world leader. So prepare him as such. That's a note to parents. Stop letting TV and secular teachers raise your kids. You tell your kids what they're going to be. You tell them what they shall be. You don't make school mandatory and God optional. If they live in your house, they go in the church. If they drink your water, they go in the church. If they suck up your air conditioning, they better go to church. I don't care if he's taller than you, got a mustache, he better get up and go to church. Let everything. As for me and my house. Don't get frustrated because of the distance between your anointing and your announcement. I'm 44 years old. Somebody asked the other day, well, it seems like you're an overnight sensation. Say, yeah, I've been in ministry 23 years. I'm a 23-year overnight sensation. Because that's what God does. He ain't trying to make no stars. He's trying to elevate sons. 
You know the difference between a star and a son, Brandon? Stars act like they can't speak to people. I've been around a couple of them. Real, real sedity. Can't, don't want to shake hands. Always got hand sanitizer. As soon as they shake somebody's hand, then they got germs. You got germs, nasty self. Sitting around like you better than people. What? And, and Jesus touched lepers, but you can't shake hands? And you want to be a pastor? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But I'm tired of pastors who don't have God's heart giving God a bad name. If you're not going to have his heart, don't use his name. There is a distance between your anointing and your announcement. And the distance is called process. And what process does is it weeds out the people you don't need that you thought you did. And it actually gives you a strength to trust God in the middle. It's great to have faith at the beginning and everybody shouts at the end. But how's that worship looking in the middle? You can be anointed and not announced. You can be selected but not yet seen. You can have power but not yet be in position. But it doesn't change that God has announced you. When Jesus was announced, he went on a three-year ministry spree, the likes of which the world has not recovered from yet, nor will it ever recover from. He walked around doing things that nobody had ever done nor ever will do again. He walked up to people, what's wrong? Your hand is withered? Stretch it out. Bam. What's wrong with you? You paralyzed? Get up. Bam. Lazarus, you dead? Wake up. Bam. His name is Jesus. Jesus Christ. Don't start. <laughs> Do it. Please stand up. Please. I love it. This is my sister right there. Look at that. That's my white sister right there. <laughs> It's close to midnight. Something evil's lurking in the dark. <laughs> Under the moonlight, the Holy Spirit really wants your heart. So close your eyes and realize this is just imagination. And all the while, the King of Kings, he wants your very life. Your very life. His name Jesus Christ bled and died and rose just to give eternal life. His name is bled and died and rose to bring you eternal eternal life. Somebody give Jesus the greatest praise you can at one o'clock. The announcement is often accompanied by these three things and then we can head home. When God is announcing you, it's going to be marked by three things, sowing, serving, and suffering. Sewing. My mama taught me early, Aventer, a dime off of every dollar goes to Jesus. Now, I'm not telling you what to do because I don't like manipulating preachers trying to make you feel guilty. That's on you and your Holy Ghost, but God's been too good to me to be holding out on a dime off of every dollar. That's just me. I've learned how to sew. It's not something I do to get something. It's a principle that I live by. Because sewing ain't about your money, it's about your heart posture, that's all. We'll talk about that in some months, but right now we got to focus right here. So, if he's about to announce you, so. It's funny that you said, God said, you want it gone, don't you? What's funny is whatever you sold is probably less than what you're getting back on the sale. So, when you sold it, it couldn't have actually met the need. So, if it doesn't meet the need, it's probably your seed. 
So if I can't really pay the whole bill off, I might as well sow it because it's better in God's hands than it is in my... Okay, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Sowing. Number two is serving. Relentless Church will be a church that serves our families, our community, and our God with relentless passion and the pursuit of excellence. And we're going to be apologetic in building bridges to people that don't look like us. They don't know our music. They don't wear church clothes. But they will be welcomed through these doors. There is no judgment. There is love. We love people. We leave judgment to God. The word of God will be preached. But God, through his Holy Spirit, will convict the heart. Can I get an amen? Amen. We're not going to talk about people and look at people and why she in here and she got on that. Why she got on fishnets and a short skirt. Maybe that's all she has. Instead of you judging what she's wearing, just thank God that she's in the house. I don't know about him. He smelled like weed. He smelled like liquor. But you smell like pride. We so quick to tear everybody up. But you ain't always been saved. We all got things we're not proud of. We all need to thank God for that blood that's covered us. Anybody in here grateful that all of our stuff ain't on the big screen? I dare you to give God a praise if he's ever covered you. Sowing, serving, suffering. 1 Peter 5, 10, but may the God of all grace who's called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you after you have suffered a while. I don't know about you, but it ain't been no easy road. I haven't always heard yes. I've been rejected, marginalized, pushed to the side. Door shut in my face, but I still served and I still sold even while I suffered because honor is the currency of elevation. And honor doesn't mean the person who's getting the honor is worthy of it. It just means you know that God is bigger than the person that's between you and the thing God said. So I close with this. God has decided to announce that redemption goes relentless. He's decided to announce that he's going to put his hand on Greenville, South Carolina in a supernatural way. God has decided to announce that racism is over in the church and he's going to use this church to be the model. God has decided to bring miracle signs and wonders back to the local church and he's using Greenville to do it. God has decided that he's going to break chains of generational curses that have been on families for years and he's decided that Greenville is the place that he's going to do it. So tomorrow we're on the Today Show. Tuesday night, right after Tyler Perry show. Our show, me and my wife's show, debuts on Tuesday night. We'd love for you to watch it. If you don't watch it, that's fine too. But God has decided to announce what he's doing right here to the whole world. So don't be surprised who walks through these doors. And don't be snapping pictures because just because they look famous don't mean they're not broken. They missed that. They missed it, Av. You're going to be shocked at some of the people that walk through these doors. But then again, maybe you shouldn't be since God has decided to announce this place as a healing center. Does anybody know you just stepped into your miracle? Service will not run this long every week, but I had to break the back of that enemy and just go ahead and establish that this church is going to be used by God to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants with whatever we have. Ladies and gentlemen, God has stepped up to the microphones and he's about to shout your name and every devil in hell that's tried to hold you hostage and everything that they had in their hands, not only do they have to let it go, they got to bring it back if they took it. Press down. Pray with me. If you don't have to leave, please don't. Lord Jesus, there are people in this room 
that didn't know that today was the day of their announcement. I'm sorry, Lord, I got emotional at the beginning. It was, I ran over time, but I ask that you will bless the people who have sown their time. Be kind to us. Then I pray in the name of Jesus that you will, by your power, save souls in this moment. Do it right here. Change lives. Seed this word in our spirits. Be glorified. In your name, Jesus. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're in here, you've never given your life to Jesus, or you need to rededicate your life to Jesus, or you know without a shadow of a doubt that after you heard the word today, you know that this is the church you're supposed to be a part of. On the count of three, if you need to give your life to Jesus, you're not sure that if you died in five minutes, you'd go to heaven, that you need to come down here. If you need to rededicate your life, you've been playing games, then you need to make your way here. If you and your family believe that God has called you to this local church, make your way. One, two, three. Come now, come now, come now. Let's celebrate our brothers and sisters as they come. Come on. Let's celebrate our brothers and sisters as they come. Oh, y'all gonna do better than that. So good to meet you. Welcome, man of God. I was in Knoxville yesterday. Welcome home, honey. Come on, y'all people giving their life to Jesus today. Anybody else? Anybody else? Before we go, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, it's me. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. I thank you for the blood that was shed for me. And I receive the free gift of salvation, the forgiveness of sins, that comes with the cross of Jesus Christ. The tomb is empty. The price has been paid. My life is made new. I'm grateful. You are my Lord and my Savior. Today, I make the announcement that I belong to you and I'm never going back. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just got saved. Welcome to the family as redemption goes relentless. Follow our elders. We want to get some information from you so we can stay connected to you. Let's celebrate our brothers and sisters. I will be in the lobby. Would love to meet you. Grab some books. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord our God be gracious unto you show you his favor, give you his peace. We love you, Redemption. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Go in peace and serve the Lord.